Right, hi everybody, it's Chris again, the Blind Wood Turner. It's great to have you back here. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of wood turning for you. Now before I get started on that I just need to say a few things. Firstly, thank you so much for all the kind comments that people have left on my first video. Uh, the comments were amazing, uh, compassionate, inspirational and, g and gave me an incentive to carry on. The subscriptions, you know, 200 plus now, absolutely mind-blowing. I know we say it a lot, mind-blowing, but it truly is. Uh, I hope that, you know, I continue to give you something enjoyable to watch and you want to keep coming back week after week to maybe learn something new. I'd like to give a shout out if I may to all the people all over the world that continue to support me and also I'd like to mention uh, Dean. Now Dean he's my support worker and <clears throat> For 10 hours a week he makes sure that I'm safe, uh, I go to the shop and go to the bank and supermarkets and wherever I need to go for 10 hours a week, you know, Dean texts me so he's a little guy with a massive heart so thanks a lot Dean and uh, we'll sleep when we're dead mate eh? So uh, there's Dean and also I'd like to thank my Uncle Alan and Auntie Margaret and the girls Megan and Fiona. They give me a little workshop at the back of one of my uncle's shops and that's where I do all my, my horror work uh, again encouraging me helping me I, I love them dearly so big shout out to them you know what I'm saying don't you uncle Alan eh? yes yes uh, sometimes I talk like uh, I'm an 80 year old uh, not northern chap but anyway I'll uh, I'll do that on Saturdays in the shop with Uncle Alan. Uh, <clears throat> a quick word about safety. Now, obviously, uh, when I do these videos, please don't feel compelled, whatever you do, to copy me. At, at the end of the day, I, I, you know, I am completely blind, and I'd hate for anybody to try and replicate what I'm doing and end up getting hurt. You know, please find your own way. You know, again, lots of wood turners say, make sure you follow the instructions of your own tools and learn what to do and be safe. <clears throat> That's true. So again, really, these videos are about you watching me and what I do, how a blind man manages to turn wood. Uh, and if I just reach over here, have a, have a grab. Again, an another thing that's mentioned a lot, face shield. Now, wood turning, part and parcel I suppose with danger now some of you might think well what's the point of him wearing a face shield you know he's, he can't damage his eyes but you know I wear a face shield because <clears throat> I still don't want dust particles and shavings going in my eyes because it's uncomfortable and also <clears throat> if a piece of wood lets go I don't want a broken nose or a bush cheekbone anything like that any injury that takes us away from our hobby surely not a good thing so always wear a face shield show this machine you know as much respect as you can give it you know if you're not paying attention it, it will bite back so you know safety safety always people uh, and that's pretty much pretty much it really so uh, what I'm gonna do now is just quickly explain this this project that I'll be doing today I've got this <coughs> this piece of hawthorn now there's a woman I know whose daughter is a, she's a white witch actually, a real live white witch. So she's asked if I could make a wand out of a piece of hawthorn. So I said, yeah, of course I can. We've got a hawthorn tree in, in the front garden that's just had a tree surgeon, you know, uh, prune it back because it had a bit of uh, disease called fire blight. So I've got this piece of wood. Now I've been instructed to give thanks to the tree uh, for providing me with this this uh, this branch to work on which I have done so uh, I'm going to give it the respect 
that it deserves this beautiful piece of wood so uh, it's not going to have any finish on it no stains it's going to be you know a green wood so I mentioned that to the lady and she said in a way that would be nice because it will do what it wants to do when it's been turned and the, the, this white witch will you know have it as a virgin piece of wood and it will age and split and crack and do whatever it wants but I think that's you know let's leave it natural and then we're going to give it lots of respect so in a minute you know Charlie's going to reposition the camera you all right son yep Charlie's going to reposition the camera and come in a bit closer I'm going to put my turning smock on uh, and my face shield and then we'll start turning this down so uh right we'll uh catch you in a second okay everybody now we're ready to go so I've just had a little practice there just off camera just to make sure that my rest is in the right place and everything's safe and there's no snagging so what I'm going to do now is turn the lathe on and then uh, I'll show you how I, I start to rough this this piece down remember it's it's green wood so it's damp so I've got it going there I'm just feeling going nice and slow just knocking the bumps off Taking me time. Just a bit of chatter there. So I'm going to stop the lathe now. I'm just going to move the rest. Just feel where the end is there. I'm just going to move it along a bit. To make sure there's no snagging. Pull up that in place. Just roughly line up where I need to be. My left hand goes over feels the buttons and again ride the bevel first nice and slow stop again there let's move a bit over to the left just have a feel where that is got that in place and we're good to go again nice and slow Okay, so roughly that's what I what <laughs> roughly weren't intended as a joke. What I'm going to do now is, if Charlie turns the camera off in a moment, I'll rough this down, and then when I've got it nice and true, I'll come back. Okay, everybody. So I've roughed it down really as as much as I want to at the moment. Now, I can still feel a little bit of bark on there, but I'm happy with that. And if it ends up staying there, it does, and it's natural and character. So what I need to do now is sort of like uh, the requirements that she said were about 15 inches long. So here's, here's one of the gadgets that I was talking about in the first video at Mike Waltz and it's a talking tape measure. So what I need to really do now is set the uh, external reference point. So if I turn this on. Zero inches. It's just said zero inches there, so what I need to do is fifteen and three eighths inches, fifteen and one sixteenth inches, thirteen and seven eighths inches, fifteen and one sixteenth inches, thirteen and fifteen sixteenths inches, fifteen inches. Right. 
right so there we have it 15 inches so I'll just leave that there it won't retract un unless I push the button on it so I'll just move my tool rest there so what I need to do now is if I get my parting tool feel where the end of the tape measure is put that down and 15 reposition myself so I know it's roughly there face shield down lay it on make a couple of Okay, so I've made a groove there, so what I need to do now is move the tool rest to the right, make sure there's no catching, a bit more out there, okay, now because I've got somewhere to latch the end of the tape measure onto, I can place that there. And I know because I haven't retracted this, I've got a place now. If I love, roughly line that up there, and I know, I know that it, that's roughly about the 15 inch mark, so let's go again. machine off so again that's that's really just the length that I need to work now so what I need to do is also just define a, a little bead here so what I need to do there is just move my tool rest up lock it in place now I know that it's roughly there that I'll be happy with so again let's get it going turn that off I'll have a feel just see if I can right okay I think I can go a little bit deeper than that so just line it up enough now ye olde calipers so I'll just set them calipers at the dimension I want feel there and if I just go for just something like this Just reach for the old calipers there well I couldn't do that twice so what I've got there now is just roughly I can bring this handle down a bit and then I'll just roll over this bead and start bringing this to a taper. So let's get on with that. Move the tool rest a bit. I'm going to swap now to a it's a Sorby spindle gouge. It's uh, one of my favourite gouges really well made holds a good edge of 
really enjoyed using it. Okay, so that's not catching. Feel the edge there. So I know I roughly need to be here, so on with the show. It's nice. Gentle cuts. How does that feel? It's not feeling too bad at all. So what I need to do now is just move the rest to the right. Just see if we can fit there nicely. Make sure it doesn't catch. Now I'll start working from this groove. Slowly but surely start tapering this. tad now there's some vibration in this branch so in a short while I will be adding support with my fingers behind so I'm just continually just slowly taking away material here And I can feel the wood giving a little. Again, just nice and slow. I've just put my hand over the back there now. Just to steady it. need to move the rest in a bit now as we move along here so just feel where that is now okay off we go again same again nice gentle cuts just adding a bit of support there's a fair bit of bounce there but hopefully if I just take my time Nice and gentle, you know, no rush. I'm not here to win any races. Feeling the way along, nice and slow, nice and slow. Being careful not to dig the tool tip in too harshly. And of course with it being green wood, it does make the job a bit easier. I can just feel a little bit of a raised area there. So I need to, I need to stop there really now. I'm getting to the point where I need to think about really stopping what I'm doing because number one I don't want to tempt fate and uh, snap the wood and number two I think I'm getting to the point where I can 
add, add a little bit of detail with my multi-tool so again on there I contacted the wood nice and slow feel it bouncing a bit so again bring that up gently come down nice and slow stop the machine and I think if I just move move over here now make sure it doesn't cap maybe a bit more out I could just maybe remove some of this very very nearly got a little bit of a catch there which would certainly keep me on my toes so what I'm gonna do now is just take this a little bit further down here now next to this bead and then that feel that there see caps there nice and gentle little bit of a catch tiny little bead there so what I need to really do now is give this uh, a bit of a sanding and add some detail so if Charlie comes back in a moment I'll have got the multi-tool ready and uh, we'll move on to the next step radio so we're gonna pick up the next phase now I've got some uh, sandpaper I've gone for 80 grit because what I want to do is just sort of like hog away a fair bit of material here still so uh, I think I've got to the point now where I feel comfortable with the sp uh, with the spindle gouge and like I say it's quite flexible this piece being 15 inches long so I'm gonna crack on with the sandy now dust mask on so Just gently taking away the material, keeping the sandpaper moving, and a bit of support. Change to a fresh part. again fresh part of paper
but actually take my dust mask off because with it being green it's not kicking up loads and loads of particles and I feel comfortable doing this but again you know each to their own you know I'm not endorsing this way it's just you know I'm happy to do it just move the paper around I don't want to go too mad on this because like I say I'm going to get the multi-tool on it and add some character and the multi-tool will add character really just to make it appear that it's been whittled uh, by some some witch or wizard 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 <laughs> wizard in ages past so I'll just move now to this part just move the handle down Keep the paper moving. Stop your fingers getting warm, although the lathe speed isn't particularly high at the minute. I think it's about 800, but the extra dampness in the timber is helping keeping things that little bit cooler, as well as keeping the dust down. So I'll just stop the lathe now, have a bit of a feel, how's that feeling now, it feels, feels pretty good. I'll just get a fresh piece of, uh, that's the wrong grade. Just, just again, just... Again, I just need to remove a bit more material from here, just to help define that bead a bit more and it does feel a bit thick here still so. I hope you guys are enjoying it because I am. Okay, I'm just going to give that bead now. A little bit of a sanding. A bit more there. Okay, now what I'm going to do now is jump straight over to my multi-tool to make sure that the flex comes around the back out of the way. Okay, so that's on there now. So what I basically do now is take more material away. And I'm after the appearance of, you know, hand carving or it's been whittled. Just really to uh, give the appearance of age, really, and add to the mystery. You know, I wonder how old this wand is, eh? I know, it's, it's really about 10 years old, this piece of wood, but... We can all imagine that it's 2,000 years old.
So I'll just continually doing this. And you can just work away at certain areas more than others. There's, there's no set way of doing anything here. You know, and, and when I do come to uh, take it off the lathe and just trim the ends on the bandsaw, I can just give the end of this one just a bit more of a point. How's it looking, Charlie? Oh, looking old. Yeah. Not like your dad. Yeah. No, oh, thanks, son. <laughs> Radio. Let me just have a a feel of that. So, yeah, you can feel. But it's a bit jagged, a bit rough, because I don't want to go too mad. And I think I'm quite happy now to just separate this on the bandsaw and just give the tip a bit of a point and uh, yeah, I'll meet you at the bandsaw. So. Okay, I'm at the bandsaw folks, so basically I can feel where I need to make the cut there. So. If I just offer that up roughly to the blade, roughly about there, well, yeah, there, just pull it back a bit, turn the bandsaw on, push it through nice and slow, the cut's been made, wait till the, the blade stops completely. And I'll be able to spin this round, remove the article, and then same again, roughly feel with the blade against the timber where I need to be making that cut. I'll be happy with that about there. Again, hands well clear, made the cut, again, no, no sudden movement, so that's the wand now, so Charlie, back over to the lathe. Right, everybody, back again. I've got my me, uh, me palm sander here now, so I'm just re really gonna just round over this end now. Keep it moving. I'm gonna keep the wand rotating. In fact, I've just had an idea. Stanley knife, again, extreme caution, cutting away from you. Let me just whittle this down. Always cutting away from you. retracted nice and safe <laughs> oh, that's 
Okay, how does that look, Charlie? Old. Does it look old? Yep. Would you be happy with that if you was a white witch? Yep. Okay. Right, I think uh, I think we'll do with that. Well, in fact, that's what I think on. <laughs> that off just round it knock that end off a bit there okay and there you have it a half arm wand for a real white witch da -da 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 -da. credit right well there you have it guys and gals it's my attempt at a completely natural 15 inch half arm wand for a real white witch I think its simplicity is really nice it's a lovely a lovely wood and obviously it has mystical connotations you know because of the druids and hawthorn wrapped around your house to keep the vampires away so uh, I'm pleased with how it feels I hope she'll be happy with it uh, and with age and time and handling you know its appearance will change we've left it completely natural no waxes no stains uh, I think it's gonna be a really good one uh, I'm sorry for Charlie saying and now the credits in the previous scene he got a bit excited sorry it's all right son <laughs> we're novices at this game uh, so basically with, with, with the turning that I've done today is a lot of people I suppose would like to strive for perfection but be, being blind I have to just do the best that I can in the here and now you know tomorrow doesn't matter when I'm on the lathe or yesterday doesn't matter it's the present it's the here and now and all I can do is the best at that moment in time I'm quite happy with that I'm happy that I didn't snap the bugger so you know it, it's something that I can give to the lady to give her daughter uh, and I'm pretty much done folks so I'd like to finish with saying, you know, thanks for watching. You know, next time, uh, I think I'm just going to do a little bit of a shop tour, or I might, I might do a vampire steak as well. So anyway, I'd like to finish with a shout out to a very close friend of mine. He's called Russ McCamey. Now, in my opinion, he owns one of the finest haunts not only in San Diego, California, where he's from, but in the world. Uh, it's super extreme he does a lot of amazing videos for the haunt fans and heart community uh, and I made him a vampire steak and it now resides at his home in California so a big shout out to Russ uh, thanks for uh, all your support Russ and commenting on the on the video I did with Mike Walt and also I'd like to give a mention to everybody else in the world that's that's blind or losing the sight uh, never forget you're completely awesome you know if you keep a warrior's heart and never get up give up you know uh, things will be hard but you will get through so it's all the blind people in the world oh and now the actual credits